My name is James Cornthwaite. I'm with Mylug. Uh, that's on Vancouver Island. And uh, what I've built here is a uh, scale reproduction of a landing scene after the shuttle Endeavour returned from a mission called STS-118. Uh, that was a mission to the International Space Station. Uh, and so what I've tried to depict is all of the uh, support vehicles. I mean, there's some missing. I haven't got had time to build them yet, but uh, some these are some of the major support vehicles. One is an air conditioning unit. Uh, this one is uh, for ex for exhaust gases. Get rid of the exhaust gases. There's a command and control van over here. Um, that's where the uh, you know they kind of oversee the whole process. And then of course the orbiter itself. And uh, when I built the orbiter, my goal was uh, to make it as accurate. Uh, as possible from a shape perspective, but also to make it a uh, minifig scale so that you could play in it. Uh, I wanted to have lots of playable features. So I have, uh, if you look here, uh, we have the the, uh, the hatch which, which operates and the door is, is the right size for the guy to crawl through. And then we have it on a turntable here so we can uh, take a closer look inside. So when we look inside, uh, you know, we have the correct size of flight deck with the upstairs and the downstairs. I, I know a lot of people weren't aware that the, there was that much room or maybe not that much room inside. It's kind of cramped, but uh, um, there, all of this is playable. Uh, we can open a hatch and stick a minifig inside, inside this tunnel. Um, the airlock door inside there can operate if you want. It's just a bit hard to reach in right now. Um, some of these l layers come off so you can get your hands in and, and have some fun. <laughs> That's great that you built this, you know, with kind of playability in mind, because typically a model like this, you, you wouldn't necessarily do that. You're just going to have it to display and capture the scene, but you actually added in those extra details. Yeah, and um, that added some difficulty to the construction process, because in order to make it playable, you need room inside, and often the interior is a scaffold for what you have on the outside, right? It holds all the bricks in place. So it was a real challenge to find a way to craft the, the sh correct shape and still have room inside to do things. Um, there's a f some other features like, uh, you know, like the real shuttle, these guys come off uh, so that they can be transported away on a truck. Uh, this unit here at the front, this is a thruster section. This this will lift out. This can be transported away for servicing. All of the landing gear actuates. All of the control surfaces move and can be posed. Um, there'll be a second version where uh, I plan to uh, motorize all of those surfaces. I'm not. I'm not really sure going forward. You know whether people will be able to remote control that or or what. But uh, that's kind of the end goal. Right. Yeah. Get some nice movement in there. So when you were working on this, did you have like blueprints uh, or what were you kind of working off of photos? How, how did that work? A uh, combination. Um, a lot of photos to get uh, the coloring correct. Um, you know, the tile detail on the back here. But I did start with some actual blueprints of the real shuttle and scaled it down to an appropriate size that worked well with the minifigs. Yeah. So. And it turned out really nicely. So uh, talk about how you achieved kind of some of the angles uh, on the, the wings in section here because, you know, that's not easy to do with Lego. Correct. It's not easy. And, uh, you know, there, it was kind of a stroke of luck that um, the length of the Lego elements worked out exactly. So I was able to get the exact wing shape with these white plates. I, if I twist this in, maybe we can see a bit more easily on the video. Um, so these white plates with the little jog in here, I mean, it... I didn't have to finagle anything, it worked out perfectly. So then with this section along here, uh, the top and the bottom are both uh, curved, so you know, I, I, I was able to use some uh, snot techniques to get those curved elements uh, bottom to bottom. And then inside, what I used, I used a technique where there is, a, running inside there's a flex tube and that runs all the way along in here. And then uh, these, these elements can just kind of clip to the flex tube. So, uh, you know, it, in the beginning, it, it took quite a while to, to figure out a way that would work. But in the end, it was actually quite simple, you know, quite simple in, uh, 
implementation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it turned out very nice as well. So that's a uh, good job getting that. So then talk a little bit more about some of the minifigs you've got here as well. Are any of these custom? I know you tried to go for a fairly realistic look with them. I'm kind of a Lego purist, so I don't like to draw on minifigs or pr custom print anything. So everything here uh, should be um, something you can just buy from a set. And so uh, what I've done here is uh, I've used uh, the body from the uh, women, women in space, uh, women of NASA. Sorry, um, I've used the life jacket as a as a parachute. Um, and then otherwise, I've just tried to closely match what the actual uh, ground support crew might be wearing. So, you know, white suited, these white suited guys with their, with their air tanks. And then some of, the, some of the greeters over here are dressed more casually. So when the astronauts disembark, they, you know, they can meet and, meet and greet. Um, and yeah, I uh, tried to match all of the astronauts to the crew for this specific mission. So I have each, you know, each, each astronaut matches a particular person. When the shuttle is on orbit, it, uh, you know, can utilize the coldness of space to keep itself cool. Um, in, in, the, in the payload bay, there are radiators for that purpose. But once it lands, all the systems have to remain running, but they need an external air conditioner unit. So that's what this vehicle here is. Um, I don't even know the internals of how it works. I just modeled it, you know, using a lot of photos as a resource. Uh, you know, tried to get all the all the little details in there that are on the real real deal. Um, this vehicle here is kind of looks similar. A lot of people think it's a fuel truck, but what it's actually for is for uh, they they hook it up to the back of the orbiter. And actually, if you look over at the back of the orbiter, you'll see guys on a on a a staircase there. Those guys would plug in hoses, and then uh, the system will evacuate any d potentially dangerous gases. And they do that prior to the astronauts disembarking, so that the vehicle is basically safe to be around. Yeah. Um, and then here we have a stair truck. This is modeled off a uh, the, the real stair truck that they use. Um, I think it's a Freightliner chassis. Um, I forget the exact model of the staircase, but I tried to make it as you know as realistic as possible. Um, it actually, you know, it, it whoops, it slides up and up and down and can lock in position just like the real thing. Uh, yeah, I, I I try to do that with all of my models, make them as as realistic as possible. It's all the logistics and support that go along with the the big orbiter itself. Yeah, and the orbiter just by itself is is interesting, but I, I like to add you know different different elements to to kind of fill out the display and uh, give people things to think about. <laughs> sure, it tells a little bit more of the story when you've got all these different elements surrounding it. That's right, yep. So as kind of more next steps, you know, I'm going to build more of the support vehicles and then uh, once I've done that, uh, move on to, the, you know, the next orbiter and and uh, a mobile launch system and, and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, look forward to that then. Thank you. Yeah, you bet.